Well, I'm, you know, still not registered as a, a I'm thinking now of registering, re-registering as a Republican myself because I, I'm so enjoying this brawling going on. I've, I've been just enjoying that. I've been enjoying the heck out of it because, geez, it's it's just good to see somebody that, I wonder if he's taking super male vitality or something, you know. It's good to see someone act like a man, isn't it? I mean, if, God. You know, what have we got there? Little, little mealy mouth Lindsey Graham and these Mitch McConnell and these, you know, these kind of mealy mouth congressmen. They they sit there, they get rolled every single day and they explain their constituents that they've done everything they can. But the president holds it's like, no, they don't have to pass a budget. No, they didn't have to pass that Paul Ryan piece of crap. I'm, I'm really a stealth liberal budget. You run the debt up to where it's a debt crisis. He's such a lying you know what? He shouldn't be there. Well, anyway, so now we have a chance of, you know, well, I know people say that we're all slaves and it doesn't matter and nothing matters and nothing matters and nothing matters. You're just a slave. You know, you'd be better off being born in a toilet. You know, you'd be better off being flushed into a sewer than, than living here in America. You know, you'd be better off being a dumpster baby than being here. Um, because you're just a slave anyway. It'd be better off if you got aborted. If you got aborted, you wouldn't have to just be born a slave and be a QCIP number. So I understand conspiracy theory. Okay, we're all slaves. It's all bad. Nothing matters. Trump is just another shill. It's, uh, you know, you're just being duped. You're all mind-controlled slaves. You're just being mind You're lost. You're, you don't have the truth like we do. Here, let me tell you the truth one more time. You're screwed. There is no hope. And screw you, okay? Now go make a YouTube out of just all the different ways you're getting screwed. Call yourself some kind of uh, uh, radio talk show host communicator because you're going to tell people the real truth. The real truth. Uh, I've yet to hear anybody talk about gang stalking the way I understand it. You know, that's another one. That's another area. Um, you know, that, 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 that there's a bridge between a supernatural bridge between the actual events on the ground, uh, an interdimensional aspect to it and spiritual warfare. It's all connected. Otherwise, it just becomes like the game with uh, Sean Penn and Michael Douglas, where you got a room where, where everybody commiserates, right, where they plan all this stuff. No, they don't. And until we get down to that, I just I'm, I can't talk about it because I, you know, I see a lot. There's a lot to it. And also, don't forget this. When you're a lamb of God, you know, in other words, you're 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 not in their system or what, you know, for whatever reason you are, you know, God made you the way he made you. Um, right there, you're gang stalked right there. You're targeted. Every single one person that's in that category is a targeted individual. Every single one. Now, are there people that get targeted electronically? Yes. They get messed with and, and understand that there's all kinds of experiments. There's, ra- there's people being raped by electronics. They're being, I, I get messed with all the time. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's terrible. Uh, but right now, it's gone mainstream. Okay, so electronic stalking used to be for an individual here or there. Now it's being blanketed across the whole population. It's just like chemtrails. So it's all connected and hurting humans, hurting human beings. So we need to talk about it, but we don't need to talk about it unless we talk in universal terms, in terms of spiritual warfare, in terms of every single person is subject to being uh, afflicted by it. And, um, you know, there may be perps, but the perps are not ever organized. They're all compartmentalized. You, proof, how many of you have cornered one of them and questioned them and they don't know what you're talking about? Well, that's happened endlessly to me until I figured it out. I figured the real truth out about it. That's right. That wasn't the same person that was there they, when it was going on. How they pull that off, I don't know. God, that's strange. Whether it was holographic or whether, I don't know. But I know one thing, 
it's not the same person. The person had no memory of it. Uh, I used to think there was a timeout, like they were used, and then they attacked, and they were coalescing with other people, and it was like a gang stalking thing. And then, and then, you know, uh, I'd see them again, and they'd have no memory of it because that they were blacked out at that point. No, that's not right. It's the entire scene was different. It looked exactly the same, but it wasn't the same. So the people that were there before, who are identical to the people that you see the next day, weren't the same people. Uh, look, as messed up as that sounds, that's the closest to the reality of this this horrifying reality. You know, I mean, I've I've also seen my own part in it where I, you know, where I was really frightened and I, I remember looking out this window. I was here and I could see there was a guy in a window and the window was flapping. The, the curtain was flapping out the window in an adjacent you know, property, maybe a few acres away. And I could see that window and the thing flapping there. And there's someone behind there. I thought, you know, they're watching me. They're watching me. They knew I'd be here. And they somehow they they're right there in that window. And I keep trying not to look in the window, but I keep my eyes keep going there. I can't I can't stop myself. And uh, this was a property that we were actually looking at as a possible rental property. And, uh, you know, I was having manifestations like that, you know, just terribly, terribly frightening. And I, you know, very hard for me to hang in there without running, screaming away. You know, and. uh I kept thinking, how do they know I was going to be here? How in the world did they get into a place just across the way? They're a perfect spot to, 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 they want me to see they're looking at me. Why are they terrorizing me like that? And to, you know, the untrained observer would say, oh, you're just paranoid. You need medication. I'm sorry, but, uh, you know, that was the thing. Then you go back another time and, you know, you look at the window and it seems normal again. So the conclusion that one comes to when one puts one's noggin to it for, you know, many years, many, many years is that, that it's above our ability to comprehend how it, how it all works. But we can stipulate certain things like the interdimensionality of it. And when people talk like that, then I say, okay, they know something about gang stalking. But until we get to that point, they don't know anything. Because why? Because it, without that, nothing were, it just It's just pure terror. Without that, there is no cohesiveness in the understanding of it. Because you can never explain how they were there, and then they weren't there, and then they were there, and then they didn't know. And you can't... It, and they were coordinating with others, then they weren't, and then they were, and all this other stuff. It, it just isn't possible. It's not possible to be an organized stalking in the way people think of it. I mean, I know that people at work will bully somebody. You know what I mean? They'll mess with their desk. You know how kids are in school when they bully. They, they're stalking that person. They're, doing, they're gaslighting that person. They're, they're playing a, each playing a role in how to mess them up. The witches, classic gang stalkers. They're always trying to get around a guy, find a guy they can take down, right? Who doesn't know anything, right? Infiltrate, get control of every aspect of his life, and then get power by siphoning off, you know, by slowly ruining his life and ruining his, his, um, by ruining him, they get power off that little by little as he becomes degraded, you know, starting to fail in school, let's say. He fails at his job. He uh, becomes uh, obese. He loses his wife. He becomes infirm, you know, slowly just all the way to nothing. And at each step, they get power. And they do this on purpose. So they're always gang-stalking people, the witches, that is. Always. They work in teams, looking for someone they can take down because that's how they feed. And they build up their power at the expense of someone else. I'm surprised we, we don't talk about that more often because that's, that seems to be the real danger out there is people, you know, targeting unsuspecting, you know, innocence, if you will, 
and uh, and and feeding off them until they're so degraded they're 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 just become derelict. They're good to just you know they become homeless. They become you know infirm. They die. They uh, they become useless to society. Useless to themselves. They're a mere shadow of themselves. And the awful awful injustice of it all is they never saw it coming, and they they were unprepared for it when it did come. And they've never they they are out of their element in terms of having any capability of dealing with uh, things like that because they just don't understand. The motivation people is always the same. It's they you know you need to feed and there is a host, and that's why they do it. I asked my friend. I said, "Why do they do that?" He told me about a guy they targeted and took him down. And I said, "Why do they do that?" He goes, "Oh, I don't know." And I, the answer that I would tell my friend now is this, because they need to feed, friend. That's why. Without that, they, have no, they, they, they can't get out of bed. You know, they're, they're on a clock. Once it runs down, they've got to go feed again. And they're parasites. They, whatever they, made them human, made them intact, they sold it already. I'm not surprised that Austin, Texas, is becoming the capital of witchcraft in America. And it's growing, growing, growing. What that means is that they will feed on everything they can feed on. And when, because there's so many of these witches, when there's no more to feed on, uh, you can expect total bedlam, total violence, total instability, and complete hell. Hell, 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 and more hell. That's why the Bible says, you, thou not, shall not suffer a witch to live. Because when, when witches get involved in communities, they usually become poor. They become destroyed. They are anti-human. They want control. They want to manipulate at first. But then later it becomes, you know, it, it just becomes akin to feeding. Like I say, they, you get, you know, you, you lose your soul. You get so far down there. I mean, how else are you going to fill up? Well, they'll feed on us. We'll have bad luck. We won't be as well as we could be. We won't perform at the level we, we should perform. We won't be having as good a life as we could have had because the witches are feeding on us. And we could, we could decide to fight back. Uh, without, you know, if they don't feed, they die. You know, they, they go into poverty, they go into, you know, they become the very thing that they do to the other guy. They become that if they don't feed. So their idea is, well, it's better, you know, them than me. I'm stuck with this curse, right? I got to feed. Witchcraft is just a part of the, you know, it becomes a part of them because it's an automatic thing. They sold their souls and so they have to feed. And witchcraft, you could just call witchcraft street smarts rather than witchcraft, right? It's a whole spiritual realm that they're very familiar with because it's, their survival is, 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 you know, based on that understanding. If they don't understand, they won't survive. So they have to understand. Well, around here, it's rampant. In Mexico, rampant. In New Mexico, rampant everywhere. Like I said, I've been downtown where I've seen spells drawn on chalk on the, on the sidewalk. So they're very serious. <laughs> and, uh, and they hurt. It hurts. It hurts when they target you. It's bad. But they have to target someone. Well, you know, it, look, either you die or they die. It can get to that point. If we live, they're dead. If they live, we're dead. Then they're dead because they, you know, without us, they wouldn't be able to feed. So, it's um, it's a it's a terrible, terrible, terrible curse. I've got to go in there and I've got to cut the rest of the box. It's just the little thing I've got to do in the end, and I have to make sure that I stay in character the whole time because sometimes I'll slip out, you know, of character on this piece, but. You know, it just envisions that, you know, given our society and, and the lawlessness of the uh, political correct people and the bathroom people, whoever these people are, 
Uh, it's going to eventuate in violence. I mean, I'm, I've, I've said it before. I'll say it again. There are people that they have children. If the children get hurt, if they get killed because of, uh, because of any of this, anything related to it, you're going to have, you know, you're going to have real trouble. I don't think Obama gives a damn about anything like that. I don't think he cares if there's a violence around this, around any issue, because I see he doesn't give a damn about people getting beheaded. So, you know, why would he care about that? You know, they, he'd love to have a fight where he could call these, uh, you know, these white Christians, you know, terrorists. You know, so any Christian that's white and trying to defend the Constitution, defend the bathroom, or defend this or that, they're the enemy, right? And so he will turn a bunch of them into criminals that become, you know, and, and, and uh, uh, it would all be based on lies and deceit on Obama's part if he does that. Because they wouldn't be the enemy. They would be trying for a fair, a decent place to raise their children. To be allowed to raise their children with decency and morals, you know. Not to be, you know, a racist or whatever. But but not to be, you know, these sort of Luciferian progressives. You know, where we're trying to turn it into an orgy with children. I mean, I think that these people are despicable. The progressive left or whatever. And they... They look the other way on this stuff. It's 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 absolutely um, appalling. And um, I used to have respect, you know, for human beings in general. But when they become what they become, these monsters, you know, I I just I just realize the danger we're in, and I realize that if they had their way, they would just behead us all and and cheer it on like in the stadium. They would cheer, cheer, cheer. So I know they're my enemy, right? I know they're not my friend. Their political party tells me if they're my friend, you know, their political persuasion. If they're PC, uber leftist, whatever, they're not my friend. It's that simple. Well, you could minister, I minister to them here. I'm just saying you're not my friend and you're, you know, you're the godless, you know, a progressive uh, that uh, doesn't care about uh, morals and virtues and, you know, you want to go around shaming people for saying the wrong thing or for being white or for being some other thing you don't approve of, authoritarians, uh, anti-freedom, uh, anti-capitalism, anti, anti-happiness, anti, um, anti-heterosexual sex, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, the, the, these, are, these are not, you know, these are not friendlies. When I see them in town, I have to, you know, gird up and guard myself and I just don't engage them in conversation because I, I used to. But now they've made it, they have made it impossible. Um, you know, they have become militant. And as a result, there's no chance of conversation, no chance of, of uh, having them reconsider. And, and I'm sure that I'm not wrong. I'm sure that... Uh, that uh you know the way that 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 I'd, I'd like us to live not that i measure up to it all the time but i think you know honor virtue honesty hard work you know those things um accountability you know responsibility those things are you know what we teach our children and in so doing we would have a much you know better society not obama's a terrible example to children awful you know, blaming, you know, the, the world economy, you know, and then and then blaming the Republicans in Congress for this little slowdown that, you know, he it's none of none of this is his fault. He, he saved the economy. He's the best president who ever lived to do things like that in front of the children. That's just obscene. To, to take no responsibility for anything is obscene. You know, if, if he was a decent human being. Uh, he would, um, you know, say the buck stops here. You know what I mean? And uh, we're working on, the, you know, he would have a different answer. But to just simply say the world economy is slowing down, I mean, um, you know, we're all connected. To the, the world economy is our economy. So he says, so therefore we are, but it's got nothing to do with me. Uh, is hogwash. 
I have a feeling if we slip into a depression, he would take credit for saving the economy, call himself the greatest president ever, and hand over the the complete failure and the complete devastation to the next president um, and, and walk off and endorse, uh, have, uh, you know, big uh, library galas and things like that at his libraries. Going to have one in Hawaii, one in Chicago. Two that I know of, and there may be more. They may be all over the country to make sure that we know he's the best president who ever lived. <laughs> that's that's all I can talk about. I just, uh, I, I you know, I saw a page for Jeff Bridges, the actor, and he's meeting with Jerry Brown and saying Jerry wants to feed kids. He wants to feed kids. I think that's a great thing. But he's a guy, another guy that just seems to be to not have a clue. Again, it's just this this whole sort of liberal thing that that Hollywood actors are into. I I don't. It's like they're not even living in reality. You know, we have uh, we're in a very serious situation in this country where we got maybe one chance to live. Otherwise, it, it, you know, as I look out my window, I have beautiful views of gorgeous nature. I do have a fence out there. I can't see it from here. So uh, maybe I don't see everything that could have wandered through. But I've got a beautiful view of nature. I've got absolutely no reason to be upset with anything. Um, Beautiful view, great friends, Whatever, but issues affect me. You know, it's it's like um, because we're all connected. It's like when do you stop really caring about if they're going to trash the place with laws and things? Well, that's a nice view, and I really appreciate it, and I really say praise the Lord. I love it. It really renews my sense of God. You know, go out in nature, and it'll do that. At the same time, I just don't feel I can turn a blind eye and live in a bubble. Um, when people are doing wrong to people, you know, when people are hurting people. It's just not my nature to just, you know, kind of retire, <laughs> go off into, you know, into uh, a fairy tale. I, I'd love to do it. I'd love to do it. I've got every reason to, 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 um, you know, I used to look at this, this, this one guy I knew, he had a Volkswagen bus, and he was just wandering around, you know, he had like a pop-top camper, and he was just wandering, going down to Mexico, and hanging out in Baja, and then, you know, up north, and he'd, he'd work a little time as, uh, in whatever, you know, to get enough gas to get to the next place, and then he could kind of slack off again. <laughs> and uh, he just like wander, you know, and he was just really into it. He seemed really happy, and he seemed to have no clue about the human drama that's going on and and the horrible inhumanity to, in, in, in humanity that's going on to man. And he seemed to have no clue about any of that. He wasn't even dealing with it. He was just like grooving on the... On you know, just wandering down the highway, and he'd he'd work at this gas station and get a little money, and then off he'd go again. And and um, you know, he said to me, he goes, "Why not just wander?" And I've been a wanderer, you know what I mean. But I'm still connected up with what's going on, um, and I'm always praying, you know, for a better outcome. And I'm I'm praying for the Lord to show me you know, insight into, you know, to people like Mitt Romney that I don't understand or, or Glenn Beck or Ted Cruz or the whole thing that happened there. I didn't understand it. So I've asked the Lord for insight into how they could be like, like I say, you see a Twitter page, you wonder, that's not the same Romney I just saw on television. I'm, I'm so confused here, Lord. You must help me to understand and um, yeah, the, that's right. It's the same old understanding you understand. Uh, it's basically the the cover story is not what the real story is. It's a, it's a, it's a hypocrisy. And um, 
there's just a lot of that. And, and we do it too, you know, to a certain extent. We don't mean to, but we want to put the best face on something. We, we, we do it from time to time. Um, you know, Romney did it for big political reasons. Um, but I don't see how he could tout himself as such a great person and have such an image of an upstanding, you know, American hero when he's done things like throw a fight, you know, with Obama and, you know, other things, uh, like slander his person that he was, uh, you know, friends with a couple of years earlier uh, for no other reason but political expedience. I just, I can't, you know, I, I had trouble with that one. And uh, the answer is they do it all the time. They do it every day. The answer is the surface reality that you're presented with is not true. Well, you already knew that. I mean, you all know that. Is not true. And the real reality, like Ted Cruz presents this, he went on and on with this litany about his father and him and coming to the America and how uh, only in America, this whole, you know, sort of swelling Americana story of the of of a family from rags to riches from from just being a poor immigrant to being a successful American and you know a great glowing patriotism and it turned out all to be wrong so what's the answer the answer is it's the the surface of Ted Cruz that is at fault that's the untruth. But the underneath that you see, that's the truth. So we'll see. The other thing about Trump is, you know, he's got a lot of dangers out there and temptations and things, you know, uh, and he's having to deal with all the elites and he's still Donald, but, you know, he's only a man. <laughs> so if he gets gobbled up, gee, you know, that'd be terrible. But yes, it's a possibility. Of course, anything's possible. But I just think God's in this. So, you know, I, I, I think God. You're what? Lost sound? You lost sound? Testing one, two, three. One and two and three. Well, when you when you run the computer, if you're looking at, uh, you know, videos and things while I'm talking here, you could lose sound. Um, yeah now Kunita is saying he's never seen a cycle like this uh, I've, I've uh, I have never seen anything like what's going on right now uh, with this election cycle but it's bigger than that it's it's a whole um, it's a physics change in some way I'm very excited about it I'm hoping that the Lord really brings all this dirty laundry out so we can take a look at it and dispense with it. But we got one more big fight on it. It seems like the more the light is coming in, the more the things are changing, the more you've got, uh, you know, the, the evil, the darkness, the, the, the political correct police, the, the cheating, the lying. That seems to be ramping up too, but then all that lying and cheating is out in the open. No, no, Dashishi's doing a great job here. She's guarding me, aren't you, Dasha? She's guarding. I have the best guard dogs. They're absolutely fierce. I mean, when I look at Dasha, one of Germany's greatest contributions to, to the world is the German Shepherd. With those ears that are just, they, they hear more than any other dog. I mean, they're just, and they're up in the air, and they're just like that. They're just giant ears. Yes. I think there's something going wrong there. Something wrong? Okay, I'm sorry. Um, looks like to me, I, I, am I, it must be my dog. It's over. It's over? The show is over? I don't see how it's over. Oh, we just hit three hours, maybe. Are we hearing anything? 
Oh, it's back. Okay, I see that Lee Jackson has said it's back. Okay, well, you know, I, I know I've hit the three-hour mark, and that's amazing that I was in the studio for three hours. <laughs> and that's for three hours. So, and I've got to go back there. I know, so I'm, I'm the hardest working person, that, uh, but that's why you pay me the big bucks, right? <laughs> no, I think I'm, I'm, you know, blowing off a little steam here, and I'm talking, you know, using the, the gift of gab here to try to, you know, bring us together, just to at least gather my thoughts together in some way that I can, you know, when I leave the broadcast today, that I can go, you know what? There is hope, and I know there is. And I can feel it like just when I, you know, even some little thing like that letter that Donald Trump sent to Lindsey Graham or or posted publicly to make a public response to Graham's, you know, awful, just what a terrible person. <laughs> what a horrible, horrible, horrible human being that is making this uh, statement. I can't support Trump. Yeah, but you but whoever the nominee is, he says he'll he'll uh He'll whoever wins the presidency, he'll help them. Yeah, because he hopes it's Hillary. They'd rather have Hillary who can appoint, um, you know, anti Second Amendment, anti God, anti all kinds of things that you will. You, yes. OK, still having trouble. I can put music on. And from the mind control To and from the mind control To and from the mind control To and from the mind control Yeah Okay, here it comes. Okay, so, you know, I guess got problems with the stream. Uh, that can happen, but, you know, all in all, I've been pretty happy with this uh, speaker because we're running, uh, we know we're running a professional show. I had Rich on the line earlier. He said the track was very sinister and, he liked it, so we're going to finish it up today. Uh, I asked him to speak. He had to work today, and uh, he was bummed about that, so he went off to work. Um, uh, but the thing is, is I could have patched him in. You know what I mean? So I, I you know, we'll do that. I, probably the track will be out today. It, you look, the track is really bad. Okay, you're never going to get more. And I, I crafted, I was in character. I'm in there and I got the mic. I'm using a, uh, an SM57 mic, which is what I grew up with. I had that when I was a kid on my drums. And I still have it today. And I put a little filter on it and I compare it to all the other mics I have. And it's like, wow, that's just my, my mic. Funny thing about it is it's Donald Trump's mic too. And it's also Barack Obama's mic. The old $80 SM57 and I put it through a a, um, a Day King preamp and uh, channel strip, which is a preamp and an EQ. And that's really nice, you know, that Day King. And um, or I put it through an API channel strip, which is a com- which is a EQ compression, and uh, it's a, a preamp as well. Uh, or I put it through. In this case, we have it going through the Day King. Then it's going through a Moog delay, uh, you know, an actual, you know, box, uh, hardware. And uh, I don't use the delay on that. I just use that to drive it. And then it goes through a um, a tube compressor, which is another piece of hardware, not plugins. And it's going through a uh, Electrodyne. Um, it's a two channel. It's a um, uh, an equalizer goes through that equalizer. Then it goes through the compressor. Then it's going through a software compressor. It's going through like nine things to get this effect that, that I wanted, which is uh, to be in this character, which is the character of the vigilante. And the vigilante, um, he's a killer. Okay, so I'm playing the part of a killer. 
Now, I'm not violent. I don't, but I got into character, you know, like an actor getting into character. So what I got to do when I go back in the studio is I got to make sure that I don't fall out of, you know, become Zeph's voice. I got to keep this character voice, you know, and this guy, yeah, and he's going to kill people, you know. And, yeah, right. <laughs> and I got to keep that guy. So there's a couple places where I become Zaf again. I don't mean to, but it's hard to stay in that character. You know, it's hard to stay in that character. But that's the character I gotta be in. You know, I'm 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 uh, I'm done. I've been pushed to the limit, and uh, I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna hunt you. I'm gonna hunt you, and I'm gonna pull the trigger. Okay, so um, it's that's the character that I'm. You know, and when I go into these characters, people really like it. You know, um, you know, so I, I, I don't blame them because it's like then I, it's not you're not getting the Zeph speaking voice or any kind of trace of my voice. You're getting me doing a doing a. Uh, you know, you're getting kind of like a, a story and the best songs, in my opinion, they're always the songs that tell a story. Right. And the, then you get if you get a guy into character. You also need a girl and a gun, right? A girl, gun, and a gun. <laughs> you know, they say with a movie, if you want the movie to be successful, you need a girl and a gun right in the first five minutes, right? And something happening, some horrible thing happening. Okay, so that's the same thing with the song. If you get a get any character, and, you know, once I get into character, they say this in, in music coaching when they coach you in the business of being a rock star. You know, you have to get into character and stay there, you know. Um, so they expect you to be the same character in front of the cameras or in, in an interview on the record in the studio. You know, you, you can't, once you decide what your character is going to be, you got to dress like that character. You got to act like that character in any kind of interview. You can never let your hair down and be yourself. You got to be in that character whenever anyone in the public sees you. It's like a deal with the devil, right? So I don't do that. You know what I mean? It's like I go into different characters because I got one that's uh, that Rich calls the aristocrat. It's uh, I've got one that's um, kind of like the Englishman. He calls it the Englishman. There's one that's the Englishman. There's one that's the aristocrat. That's kind of like the decadent aristocrat. <laughs> you know, that that kind of guy. Then there's the uh, and then there are the screams like I can I can you know, do this. Ah, ah, I can't do it right now. Ah, I can't do it right now like I can. It's it's really hard on your throat, but I have a technique where I can do a long metal scream and uh, and not run out of breath because I'm not spending that much air doing it. But it's like I have to really get in on the mic or the mic, I'm almost eating the mic. Then in post-production, I raise the volume level and add effects to it. And then it's like the same kind of scream. Well, you know, you can do them. I'm just saying if you want a throat laugh, you, you know, probably if you do that a couple of times for real and really scream, uh, you, you'll be shot the rest of the day. A lot of people wind up having throat operations, all kinds of stuff that were screaming rock. Out. There's a way to do it without ruining your, your voice to do that scream. You, you, but you can't push very hard. You have to... Uh, well, there's all kinds of things we can do to make that thing happen, but I did some of those today. And uh, anyway, uh, what is this? You had a gun? Okay, so I'm seeing, uh, I'm I'm looking in the chat room here, at, and uh, and I say, what was I talking about? The girl and the gun? Is that what? What was? It? No, the girl and the gun. Yes, the, the you have a girl and a gun. In the, uh, in the, uh, if you, if you want to shoot a movie, okay, if you want it to be successful, you got to have a girl and a gun. I don't know what else I could tell you. That's, and you got to get your character up a tree and throw rocks at him. If you can do those three things, girl, gun, and the main character up in a tree, and it could be the girl is the main character, but let's say she's the girl, the object of, of uh, the man's desire, but the guy, our character is a, he's a hero. Uh, but he's he's a sinner, you know. He's he's uh, down on his luck. He's a he's a gamble holic. He drinks too much. He's uh, but he's got a good heart and he's got a, a moral center, right? 
And, uh, you know, he's got to go, you know, these these thugs and kidnappers and stuff. They they kidnap the girl. Right. And they you know, they beat him up. He doesn't know what happened. He's got a bar, let's say, on the somewhere in Boston and they beat the crap out of him and burnt the place down. He barely got out with his life. And uh, the, he was he had a fiance and uh, basically she was uh, kidnapped and he never found out what happened to her. So he's he's I don't know. You know what I mean? But that's that's I don't like that. Let's forget that story. But uh, but you're interested, right? You want to find out what happens. Right. You, is he going to go after her? Where did she go? Why did they kidnap her? It turns out she's a CIA agent. <laughs> you know, you you can see. Yeah, it, it turns out she's a CIA agent, and she, uh, and she basically, uh, you know, they were they were they were pulling her in. They had me do a cleanup operation because the the program was was collapsed. This guy was just like a victim of the CIA, so he wants payback. Well, he wants to at least find out what happened. If he was a dupe, he wants to find out what kind of a dupe he was. So he's going to have to go into danger to find out what it was. It turns out the program is top secret because if the public ever knew what was going on, um, that would be the end of the president and the Congress and everybody else. So basically, he's got to go undercover to try to solve the mystery. And he was a uh, ex uh, Green Beret and all the rest of it. Very decorated in combat. And, uh, you know, as a, a real man, a real hero. Right. And uh, and we're off to the races. Uh, you you tell me a story like that. I'm going to want to I'm going to hang in to find out, you know, if he's going to get his life back. He's going to find out what happened to him. He's going to find out what happened to what was love of his life. It turned out that she was a betrayer anyway. But he's going to find out, you know, that why he was set up like that. So he's going to go into it. And as he's in on his journey, trying to figure out what happened. All kinds of dangerous things happen. You know, rocks are thrown at him. He gets set up. They try to kill him. They leave him for dead. And so he's got he's to find out who's doing this and who's trying to ruin his life and why they're trying to ruin his life or take him out. Why are they trying to kill him? Turns out it's a much bigger story than just him. And in solving the crime, he exposes the evildoers and, uh, you know, exposes it to the light, gets it on the Internet, Blows the whole cover for the U.S. government or whoever the big bully is. And uh, he's, he's the hero once again. He, the girl says she really loved him, but was compromised, uh, was part of a dual, double life. He doesn't, he doesn't buy it, and so he almost buys it, but then he rejects her. And he's off uh, and running. We don't want him to go with the girl, right, if, she's, if she easily betrayed him because she's in the CIA and then she says she really loved him. It's it's kind of like Sharon Stone in uh, in uh, Total Recall, right? <laughs> They're all handling him. You know, all the handlers are in there. It's all about mind control. They're, she's handling her husband. So when she tries to play nicey nice like the nice wife, he you know he doesn't buy it. And uh, I'm really excited though about um, how things are changing. And um, I'm just so happy the Lord didn't forsake me because I believe he told me what was going on. And as the months have progressed, it's it's all come coming due by and by. So I feel like I didn't just hear something out of my imagination, you know what I mean? And then have disappointment following. Oh, must have been my, it was nice that I feel like I did hear from the Lord. He, I didn't get a view of what was going on. And it's nice to see that it's progressed to this point, you know, of, uh, that, that uh, it wasn't just an imagining it, it. I mean, I'd like it to go a little faster. I'd like to have it be a little more defined, but I mean, I see the trend going back toward equilibrium, the pendulum going the other way. And, and it began, you know, in earnest about a year ago, it seemed. And, then I was told a few months ago about how things and nature come back to equilibrium and then that John Wayne would be writing in, there's a group much bigger than the Obama group and the good guys are telling Obama to stand down or get in trouble and 
So there's a fight there and a lot of stuff we don't see because the news media keeps us out of it all. But I'm glad to see that um, there's a sea change and that things are, you know, I look when I was a child, I know in the 50s and the 60s, it seemed to me that, you know, everyone seemed nice on the surface. But this roiling corruption, it was under the surface bad. I remember Dick Nick, Tricky Dicky Nixon running against John F. Kennedy. Some, you know, if you're that old, you can remember that. Um, and that seemed dirty to me. The, the whole thing seemed dirty back in that election, right? The election of uh, Kennedy in 1960. And then that whole thing with the Cuban Missile Crisis. And then all the 60s were chaotic. And uh, it's been chaotic ever since. But now it seems different than then. In other words, it's not like we'd have a respite of a couple peaceful months and then, you know, there'd be some terrorist attack or some horrible thing would happen. It seems that now there's this big change. And I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I'm very, very happy about that. I'm, it can't get, you know, my view, it can't get worse than it's been. Even if a lot of this stuff hits the wall and breaks and everything kind of goes crazy for a while, it's still better than what we had before. You know, this slow slouching, how did, how did that guy put it? Slouching toward Gomorrah, right? This slout, this, this kind of leaning into hell. Slowly just being grinded like meat being slowly grinded into a hellish stew. You know, just slowly losing our sovereignty. Our minds, our lives, our children, our hopes, our dreams, our aspirations, slowly just going down, 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 slipping away, slipping away. The promise of life not there. I am, I'm telling you right now, that letter I saw that Donald Trump wrote um, about Lindsey Graham, you know, I've never seen anything like that before. I've, I feel like, well, gosh, the good Lord bless me. He let me live long enough to see something like that. I thought I'd never see anything like that. So I'm grateful to uh, Trump, even though he may not, he's not my savior. He's a man like any other. So, but uh, he's extraordinary too as a man. I, I just, I just love that he wouldn't kowtow. I just love that he just, he, he just bitch slapped Lindsey Graham. Cause people have been nice to Lindsey Graham, I guess, cause he's establishment or whatever. He could ruin their lives with a couple of phone calls, right? That kind of guy, huh? He, Trump didn't give a damn. <laughs> He's just going to let her rip. And what he said was very accurate and very articulate. So um, with that, I bid you shalom, shalom, shalom. Shabbat shalom. The Lord be praised. It's all about the Lord. Everything is about the Lord. Everything is about the Lord. That's all one can say about it. I just thank you, Lord, for I see a change. You were right. I, I'd like to see more, but I'm hey, I'm I'm pretty happy right now with what I've seen so far. I may not be happy about the you know, the 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 plans for legalizing uh evil, but I I'll see you.